It's ticket giveaway time! Have you been looking for the perfect concert to go to with your friend, but you just can't figure out which one to go to? WXOU has the solution. Might I suggest... Similar Kind. Similar Kind is an indie pop group based out of Connecticut, and they are genuinely one of my favorite artists at the moment. They just have some of the best songs out there, and if you don't believe me, take a listen for yourself. So, if you're at all interested in seeing similar kind at the sanctuary, then be sure to go over to our Instagram page at WXOU Radio and you'll find a promo over there where you can enter to win those tickets. Hope to see you there. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Joe Mo Show Interviews, this time in person. I'm joined here by a wonderful guest here at Oakland University Athletics. He is one of the lead creative minds in athletics for the Golden Grizzlies. It's CJ Round. How you doing, CJ? I'm doing pretty good. Appreciate you having me on your show. Oh, man, quite an honor. I appreciate it, man. I, lo- I love to... You know, obviously, you get athletic interviews, you get with athletes and coaches, but mm-hmm. behind the scenes, that's something that I'm always very interested <laughs> in, so I appreciate yeah. you coming on. No problem, man. It's a, such a pleasure and honor, man, honestly. And currently, we are uh, the OC is out of power. <laughs> There's an outage <laughs> happening right now, but you know how it goes here. We keep rolling on the Joe Mo shows. <laughs> so before they kick us out, we'll try to get a short interview in here. Yeah, let's do it. So with all my guests here, I, I started pretty much the same way. Your sports background, mm-hmm. I need to, you know, I need to know the foundation here. Yeah. So for you, like, was, did you get into sports, like, as a child and just kind of grew up with it? Or did somebody kind of get you into sports? Like, how, how did that begin? Yeah, if you ever asked my mom, she would just say, I had a knack for it uh, since I was a baby. It started with even just video games, but my love for, like, sports video games. So first love is baseball, honestly, or at least it started off as baseball. So I played baseball a lot when I was younger, the video games start playing basketball so the nba lives or the nba streets and Mm -hmm. the world but then i just i love sports i love competing uh some people even say i'm a sore loser at times (laughs) i think i I, i've grown up from that but yeah yeah i got that dog (laughs) in me but yeah when i was younger i I love sports um yeah and it doesn't matter what sport i I've been known to watch cricket. I don't even understand cricket, mm. but I'll watch it. Just, I, I like watching competition. I love watching sports, so it doesn't matter. Tour de France, basketball, football, it doesn't matter. I'll watch anything almost. So it's more of like the just the competition to you that is yeah. what's interesting. Well, I still have my favorite sports, basketball, obviously, football for me, baseball, still even becoming a bigger fan of soccer, but... I don't know. Something just about like sports, uh, and I guess it even started just with the passion. And when I was younger, I, I kind of thought I wanted to be on ESPN mm. in a way. Uh, I always thought I was gonna be like the next Stephen A. Smith or something. Yeah. So it kind of just started with wanting to know everything about sports so I could talk about it and not sound crazy. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes like it's you want to hold the conversation, but it's like I I don't know what these baseball stats yeah. means. I'm still <laughs> I'm still learning a lot about baseball, hockey, and mm-hmm. Ground Zero. So. It, you know, you got yeah. that constant curiosity. So I'm glad yeah. you shared that as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now moving towards your more of like your educational background. Yeah. So we know you're we know you're an Oakland Grizzly alumni. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, I so, am. Class of 2020. Yeah. yeah. So so kind of take me through like now you're doing, you know, you're, you're working with athletics and mm-hmm. you know in the creative media department yeah. lead. Uh, forgive me if I'm getting the titles wrong. Lead no, videographer, or, or so et cetera, et cetera. I, I wouldn't say I'm the I'm not the lead videographer. So my title is uh what coordinator of creative and emerging media. That's what it sounds um, like. That's but what like, it yep. <laughs> if you work in sports, especially in the creatives, you're gonna hear so many different titles, and you're gonna be like, what does that even mean? Yeah. So like for me, that title uh it's always changing. I I want to say now it's a little more like consistent. Mm-hmm. So that means. Uh, for me in my role at Oakland, it's a uh, lead graphic designer. So like graphics you see, yeah. um, that are created for our social platforms or just in the arena or wherever. Yeah, yeah those dope posters <laughs> that you guys see on Instagram hey, and I, on the walls <laughs> right I'm, here. I'm happy people think they're dope, man. Um, I stress over them sometimes just trying to make sure I create something that people will enjoy, but also like 
uh, I'm one of the lead photographers, and sometimes I, I do video, but I'm not going to say I'm our lead videographer okay. at all. And then I also help run the social platforms for all our team accounts. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. So, so for those, so for those, I mean, I say this because I wasn't aware at the beginning. You got the Golden Grizzlies account, and then you got men's basketball, women's basketball. That's all the same people. Yeah. <laughs> it's, the same, it's the same. It's the same war room where all those accounts yep. come from. So just to kind of give you guys a little, uh, yeah, little in the know. <laughs> yeah, I'm one of the people behind the account. Don't be mad at me about some of the stuff we post. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> We try to do our best. We try to get it right every time. Hey, you guys, you guys do fantastic work. So don't <laughs> worry, you. don't worry about me here. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So, t- at your time at Oakland, uh-huh. I re- I recall hearing off um, off the air that you started off as computer science, but then mm-hmm. it ended up moving into communication. So, kind of talk to me about what made you decide to make that transition. Um, for me, so computer science was actually something I wanted to do when I was in high school. Um, and as I was like telling you earlier, like I didn't go straight to high school, joined mm-hmm. them. Marine Corps. So I always thought it was something I wanted to get back into. I thought I wanted to be like uh, video game programming. Um, mm-hmm. And kind of when I got here, it was like it was still something I wanted to do, but I still wasn't I wasn't fully in love with it like I used to be when I was in high school. So I changed my major over to communications. Um, I knew like communication majors were that was a major that could help me get to sports. Still didn't even know how I was going to get myself mm-hmm. into working in sports. I thought I was going to be like somebody that was going to um, run the accounts like uh, House of Highlights or like yeah. the ESPN accounts. And I, I like social media, but I didn't like love that part of it at first. Right. Uh, and then I had a friend, honestly, uh, played uh, Ultimate Frisbee on the club team. And mm. he was a graphic designer, didn't know much about graphic design. Um, it was like a field, but it, like in the sports arena, it wasn't really a career until I was graduating. So I just didn't know how to get into sports that way. But he like showed me what it was. And I was like, oh, I want to do this. Uh, start just kind of teaching myself and then eventually taking class here and got my minor in graphic designs. So that's kind of how I got like my start mm-hmm. or just even like my process of even getting close to working in sports. Right. And, yeah. I, and I also recall uh, you had a class, you know, more more in those in that communication around with uh, Professor Gary Gilbert. Yeah. So kind of, I, I took his class for sports mm-hmm. reporting, and that's why you got such wonderful articles on WXLU.org <laughs> written by me. I give a big credit to Professor Gilbert and that. So for you and you, kind of your experience with him, like what has he taught you? Like I like to, you know, I, I had such a great time in his mm-hmm. class and learned so much. I'm curious if he had the same experience. Yeah, uh, I think it was a great class, um, even though I'm not fully on the journalistic side. Mm-hmm. I think like his class helped me just think of like ways to approach how I even do content. Um, does my stuff like sometimes you think um, when we're creating content, we're just trying to create stuff that's fun. Yeah. But sometimes it's more of how can you tell a story or how can you report on something? So if an athlete had a career high. So it just gave me like another avenue of just thinking like how I can do those things. Because um, like you might create the content, but then you're going on social and you think, oh, I have to have this crazy caption. But sometimes you just need to be able to just say what it is. And like mm-hmm. fans want that more than just the best caption in the world there's a time and place for to have them fun captions yeah so like for me it was just like he kind of showed me just like how to think about uh covering things honestly Mm -hmm. um and just honestly even just like helping with writing just a little bit still something you work on every day so i think that's what i was able to learn from that class with him uh but he's a cool professor oh he is yeah (laughs) yeah he's always he's always got um season ticket holder yeah and he goes to all the basketball games and yeah. stuff and you know taking his class all all the he's got great stories yeah and yeah i see him at like every basketball game oh, all yeah. the time so anytime i do see him uh, i say what's up uh and he's always happy to see me he's just like how you doing and stuff like that so that's pretty cool just to even be like oh you alum and be able to see some of your professors and they like recognize you and remember you can hold that conversation with them and whatnot so yeah he's a pretty cool guy i love yeah. him yeah, yeah. I-, I love this class <laughs> so Yo, 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 I'm Jake Masucci from Jake's Takes. I wanted to talk a little bit about my show on my guy Giovanni's, Giovanni's own show. And I wanted to talk about a little bit about Jake's Takes. I'm a student manager at Oakland University, and I kind of just talk all things sports. I talk a lot about the NBA, talk a little college basketball. We did a lot of March Madness stuff recently. We talked about NBA playoffs, NFL playoffs, talked a lot about the NFL draft. It's basically just an all things sports show. I really think you guys would enjoy it. And shout out to my guy Giovanni. Love him. But please check out Jake's Takes. It's available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and then it's also available on its own YouTube channel. So 
please check out Jake's takes, but please continue enjoying Giovanni's show. Before we get back to the show, let me tell you about Bart's Pizza. Bart Basilico reinvented his father's pizzeria business by putting it on wheels. I'm talking a pizza food truck, baby. Bart and his wife, Lauren, travel all around Metro Detroit, cooking up homemade pies made fresh to order in their four-layered pizza oven on wheels. You can find them on their website at eatbartspizza.com and Facebook and Instagram as well, at Bart's Pizza. His last name is literally Basil, so you know he knows what he's doing. Make sure to grab a cannoli as well while you're there. Bart's Pizza, it's too good. Moving more towards the position you're in right now, yeah. that, that you know, whatever title it may be <laughs> in the future, but yeah. <laughs> uh, for you, like doing the photography of it, uh-huh. do you? Or, I, I guess I back up a little bit. What makes a good photo? What What are you looking for when you got the camera up in the arena? Oh man, uh, I'm not gonna say I'm an expert first in photography. It's something I'm still learning every day. But like something I try to do is capture the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes the moments might be in losses some and wins. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, it's just capturing the moment. So sometimes it's capturing the player in deep thought, or maybe we just lost the game, unfortunately. And you see like a distraught face, like that can be a photo that can tell a story or you can use it as like, I, when I'm talking to our videographer, Nat- Natalie, uh, I'm always like, Hey, did you get a certain clip? Cause I'm thinking of like an origin tale story of yeah. like the downfall and then the come up if we're doing a video. Um, but then it's also just like, yeah, it's about capturing the moment, something that tells a story. Um, but I also just try to get photos that I think like athletes will also enjoy. And, right. and part of me is a little biased. I try to get photos that I can use in, to make cool graphics that people right. like. Uh, since I'm the graphic designer, like sometimes I'm like, oh, I want to try to get this shot just so I can use it for a graphic or something. Um, but yeah, photography is all about the story. It's just really capturing the moment. And you do those things, and there's a lot more to it. But if you right. capture those moments, I think like fans will appreciate it because pictures tell stories. Yeah, they do. A thousand words each. <laughs> yeah. That's a great. That's a great efficiency. <laughs> so, do you ever go into whether it's the arena or or whatever event? Do you go in with a vision like you want? You're looking for a certain moment, mm-hmm. or do you just kind of let the story tell itself? So, a little bit of both. Mm-hmm. Um. It just depends. So, like, with my photography, a lot I'm doing so I can post to our social media uh, pages. So, like, sometimes it might be I've had uh, moments where I've taken a picture of just the empty arena and just trying to get fans like, hey, this is the calm before the storm. Yeah. You just yeah. seeing it. it might be like lights are off, but you can see like some of the lights on and it's lighting up the court just a little bit just to post. Um, and then it just depends. You, you, uh, being a photographer, just being a creative in sports, you, you got to be looking for the moment sometimes. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you just got to have some luck. Yeah. Um. Like pregame, you might catch some of the players dancing. You might catch a dunk. Um. It just. It really just depends. Um. Um. I'd say during the game, you I kind of just go with like what's happening on the court. Mm-hmm. Um. But then there's moments, say for a basketball game, where there's a timeout. Maybe the crowd is cheering, the dance teams dancing, or whatever is going on, and you see a cool moment. Maybe Grizz is out there giving the little kid a hug or something. Yeah. So if you catch a moment like that, that's always cool. Um, it, so it just depends. You, know, you try to, you have to kind of like live in the moment, mm-hmm. um, and just have a keen eye and just look. But I think even the great photographers will tell you, it's luck. Some yes. of it is luck. Um, so nobody be mad at me, but there is some <laughs> luck to photography. Like you just have to sometimes have your camera in the right place, right time. <laughs> so, so when you, so in that, you know, st- still like you're, you're squatting down, you got like your little half chair. Yeah. Like, um, <laughs> do you ever, do you feel like any pressure to get enough of a certain athlete or, um, or let's say like, oh, you don't want too much of this team and you want some more of this. So mm-hmm. I'm curious, like, how do you go through that balance? Oh, it's something I'm learning every day. Uh, there's some times where I'm in my head like, oh, man, maybe I've taken too many photos of a certain athlete um, or maybe I'm not getting enough photos of an athlete. Like, mm-hmm. I, I always have that uh, challenge in my head. Um, but ultimately, like, you just have to kind of flow with the game. Some games you're going to have picture, more pictures of somebody else. Uh, it's just the nature of the beast. Um, yeah. Shooting baseball. I might have a lot of pictures uh, of pictures, actually. Now, that doesn't mean I necessarily use all of them. Right. But it happens. Like, it's just the nature of the beast. And if somebody's playing a little bit more that day, you might have more pictures. There's just more opportunities. Um, I don't try to think about it too much, though, because if you think about it way too much, it just 
you start to let that be the focus and not the craft. Right. And you just start missing, like, shots. And so I try not to focus on it too much, but I think just ultimately, because I'm, I'm a people person, and yeah. I'm really cool with a lot of our athletes. So I, I like, know them a little bit, and I just, like, I try to get them all photos. But, yeah, it's, it, there's times where you just you don't get photos of certain people. Um, you got to live with it and just adjust to it and adapt to it and get better so that you can try to capture them in their moments and whatnot. Yeah. But, yeah. So do you ever get feedback from the athletes themselves saying, like, hey, I, or, I love this picture or I mm-hmm. didn't like this picture? Like, how, mu- how much feedback do the athletes give you? <laughs> yeah, uh, they, they – I have an open door policy with the athletes. They know they can come to me. Um, so yeah, some will tell me, "Yo, CJ, I really like that photo," and I'm like, "Okay, like." And some of you have to take with a grain of salt. Like, yeah, <laughs> you're not gonna get every shot perfect. I might think a shot is actually good, and they uh, might not. So, yeah. like, I've I've had some athletes. They're like, "My face wasn't the best," and I'm like. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, guys, come on, you got to realize, like, you're playing a sport, so like that, you're that, not that's always... That's your face, it's right there. <laughs> I can't do nothing about what your face is showing um, in the moment, but, like, my biggest thing is, at least with that feedback, I try to listen, so I try mm-hmm. to consider, like, stuff we put on social media, like, hey, maybe we don't use this photo, just so... Uh, you want them to also feel happy with what you're doing and comfortable. Um, yeah. They, they can't be, though full thing because you also have a job to do like yes i ultimately have to provide content for the fans um and for the athletic department so you gotta you you gotta take a little it's a little give and give situation like yeah yes. <laughs> so um how am i phrasing this so uh-huh. when you get so you got like when you're done with the game you got a ton of photos yeah some of them, I'm, sh- I'm sure, are pretty funny looking. <laughs> not, yeah. so, not something you immediately want to post, yeah. but I'm sure you got your, let's say, a blooper reel. Yeah. What do you do with those pictures? Do you ever send them to the athletes saying, like, hey, by the way, I thought this was funny? Or, or I'm curious, like, what do you do, what do, you do with, like, the leftovers? I'll, I'll be honest. It depends on the athlete. <laughs> it, it just depends. Like, as I said, like, I, I'm a people's person, so I get to know the athletes. And so I know, like, some athletes, they're like, oh, they might find it funny. Some might be like, I, I don't want to see this photo. So it's... I, I try to stay professional with in the sense of what I'm going to submit to the athletes that we give to the athletes, you know, because of NIL and branding and mm-hmm. whatnot. But even with what we put in our archives, I try to put like the best shots. Doesn't mean I sometimes don't keep them and you look at them and be like, oh, this is a funny sh- photo. Or you might share it. You might share it with my colleagues or whatnot and we might laugh about it. But honestly, I don't keep most of them mm-hmm. unless I'm going to use it in some way. I don't keep them. It's just way too many photos. Oh, yeah. I think, like, easily, I couldn't even tell you a number, but I have to delete every photo I almost always take after three months. And that's just about how much I can hold on the Just storage wise. (laughs) Yeah. And it's just like, I always have to delete stuff. So I don't keep all the photos we don't use. And I just Mm -hmm. throw what we do use in our archive system. Yeah. Yeah, So I'm, you know, (laughs) even thinking about it after I asked the question, like, how many photos could he (laughs) pot? How many could he possibly keep? So I I get that. You got to keep, got to keep it, Mm -hmm. uh, keep it fresh. Yeah. And like at a game day, it just depends on what you're shooting, what sports you're shooting too. Like, basketball i could easily get to at the low side 500 mm. at the high <laughs> side the highest i've ever gone is 2000 and i think that was when i was just starting off and i was just clicking on everything but i there's photographers at other schools and just at the pro side they they say easily you get 1400 photos oh like my. you should be trying to take a lot of photos now that doesn't mean you're going to use all your photos you might only use 100 right some might use a lot more it just depends and just like how you critique your work so you might be like yeah i took this photo but i don't really like it and i'm not going to submit it so it just depends on what you like and what the requirements are of the job yeah and it it doesn't cost anything to click the button if you don't like it yeah you send it away yeah (laughs) so what's your process like you get let's say 1400 photos Mm -hmm. are now on your computer Mm -hmm. you're you're in the room and you're like okay let's let's get cooking here yeah how do you filter through that? That is so many. Yeah, so you just put it in the programs that you use. So I use uh, Lightroom and Adobe. Mm-hmm. Um, and honestly, I just look at all of them, and I go off of just the eye test. Um, ultimately, like I, I try to make sure my settings are all together. But yeah. ultimately, it's like, what do I think is a good picture? And so there's some shots I miss. And I'm like, all right, this is a bad shot. And so you just go, and you instantly, like as you get more practice, you know what's a good shot, what's a bad shot what you're going to edit later and try yeah. to either make it more creative and see that the thing is like with me, a lot of the shots I'm shooting just to get to the athletes, get to social media 
ultimately you still try to get creative shots yeah and them cool moments but like some of the shots i'm just doing my job so it's like every shot's not creative so you know it's a good shot i can give it to an athlete for now maybe i might mm -hmm. edit that photo later a little different for myself or mm -hmm. even for the athlete later um but it's kind of like you just got to know what you're doing in the moment um for us at least here yeah, yeah. so uh, now, now i'm now i'm kind of thinking back when you're at when you're at a game, are you like required, or let's say by the end of the season, mm -hmm. are you do you have like a quota for each player, like how many photos or how much you're supposed to kind of represent that player? Mm -hmm. or, is there any standard to that? Um, no, there's no quota. At least here, there's no quota mm -hmm. on how many photos we need to have for each player. Um, I think like ultimately, part of it is if you play a little bit more, you're gonna get more photos. Okay, but yeah. ultimately, like I just try to get photos of everybody. Um. And I always try to just get photos that tell the story of that game. And I think you stay stick to your principles um, with photo photography skills, and but also knowing what your assignment is during the game. Like, it won't matter at the end. Mm -hmm. um, but there's no requirement. But there's so many photo opportunities um, yeah. for our athletes. We start off media days, mm -hmm. and then you got practices, and then you got games. So, like... You should almost get everybody. It, there's going to be challenges uh, not being able to get everybody. It, it yeah. is sometimes a little hard, um, but I try to get everybody. I try. That's I do good. my best too. And, and with with that, um, I, I guess we'll show it here. You shot a video of me when I was in the stands <laughs> yeah. this one time. I'll uh, rock it out with the flag. I'll show it up here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's. I'm curious, like for getting the student section or getting like an audience shot, mm -hmm. like. That that's I'm sure is not a priority for you, but like what 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 qualifies like to you know have some have something like that? What what qualifies an audience to be mm -hmm. worthy of a photo? Let's say so. I think so. This year I did a lot more videography than I've done in the past. Uh, like I said, I'm a graphic designer by trade. Yeah, picked up photography. I'm still learning, still learning videography. Um, so like our staff transitioned a lot, and so I was kind of like trying to help set the foundation for our videographer. Um. She's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. She's fantastic. Um, but just helping her because she was new. So I wanted to help her just get a lot of video content. So we kind of yeah. like split the court up. And I typically was on the uh, student section side. But ultimately, like back to videography, uh, getting fans is important. It tells the story of the environment. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would never want to watch a video that's just only the action shots you want to catch. Those moments that the players might have on the side of the court is, say, somebody – uh, scores a three-pointer or scores a goal or whatever mm -hmm. you it's not about always just the action sometimes it's about the moment the environment so like sometimes you the yeah so you even you and i've told you this offline you, you're a passionate fan and <laughs> yeah. i just was like i seen you do it like like just celebrating and cheering on the athletes like numerous times so i just was like at that time, it was, like, perfect moment. I think it was, like, a timeout, maybe. Uh, okay, yeah. I, I don't really, like, remember, but I was just, like, it might have been, like, a timeout, and I seen you, like, celebrate, and I was, like, this is perfect time where I can, like, take my off the court yeah. and just, like, get you in the moment. Um, And I try to get any fans. Um, I've even had, like, some of our athletes. Um, I remember one of our athletes, Sean Slater. He's on the cross-country and track team. Mm -hmm. Um, He's a passionate fan as well, and him and some other people. I want to say another guy from the track team. Um. But they were just, like, dancing in the crowd and whatnot. So you try to get those moments because I think those moments are pretty cool in videos. Um, yeah. And people love it. And I was just, just, like, I got to know you a little bit. So I was like, oh, this would be a cool little moment. Uh, so I just thought it was, like, a cool little moment I could send to you because I knew I, – I don't, I don't know every fan, right? Right, but right. If I know a fan and you can have a moment to get a cool little piece of video of them, I think everybody would be – pretty appreciative and, yeah, and i just thought I it was sure like was. yeah and i just thought it was a cool moment it was something you could i could add into my demo reel just to show mm -hmm. my skills um yeah. that i've picked up as a videographer but yeah like when you do, do video content you're not just thinking about the action of the game you're looking at the environment sometimes it could be banners maybe it's just the words on the floor or the mm -hmm. basketballs on the rack it, it could be a lot of different things um the good the good videographers they can shoot almost mm -hmm. anything and tell a story without just needing action yeah but it's sports too so like fans are part of sports right yeah so one one um a couple more for you yeah here. really you've been doing a great such a great job here cj <laughs> I, I really appreciate, appreciate it. it so scrolling through your twitter a little yeah bit, i do my due diligence yeah <laughs> and i recall one saying um talk talking about the kind of dilemma oakland has with logos mm-hmm 
So the tweet reads, uh, what do I have to do to get other schools to stop using the old logo? Yeah. What do I have to do as a creative to make that more known? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So do, I'm curious, do you have an answer to your own question? Like, how, no. or, or I, I guess kind of explain like what like the two logos. We have an update. We had an update yeah. one a few years ago, but mm-hmm. not everything uses it. So like, what what's going on with that? Um, I, I'm not gonna say I'm the forefront person on it. Uh, because um, I'm just not the forefront person on it. Right. But I know. Um, I want to say in 2021 it probably rolled out before I even started with athletics. Mm-hmm. Um, and like it was like right as I graduated. Um. And I would just say, like, yeah, there's two different logos. You kind of have the old bear head and you have the new one. And so the big difference is that the bear head is um, symmetrical. Mm-hmm. We also changed uh, the color of the gold. Um, so them are the two big differences. I don't have an answer for <laughs> really just trying to get people to use it. I think, like, for me, I'm not saying it's all on me just to get the brand out there in a sense of making sure people know. But uh, like I take pride in my job, so yeah. I feel like responsible every time I see uh, a school that doesn't realize we have a new logo. So there's a lot of other ways you could go about it. Either just like letting schools know, hey, we've updated your logos. Mm-hmm. Part of it, I've had a few discussions with people. This summer is like it's the other schools as creators' jobs to make sure that they're keeping up to date with like new logos and whatnot. Yeah. But I, it's just me. Uh, I take my job super serious, and I just right. want people to know, like, hey, this is the Oakland logo. Like, please stop using the old <laughs> one. Like, use the new one. Um, So it's just me being frustrated because I just – when I see it, I just, like, dang, what am I not doing well enough at my job to make that more noticeable so that people know? But uh, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be a long battle, but I'll figure it out um, with the staff and whatnot and just keep doing my best to brand Oakland in the best light. <laughs> and- and on that note, with when it comes to branding, I always ask, and I've ta- I've talked about it on the Jomo show before about branding Oakland Athletics to the student body. Mm-hmm. Oakland's got, admittingly, an an issue with let's say school pride. Mm-hmm. Every school's got it, but for Oakland with athletics, it's very important to get the students. Mm-hmm. In. I, I try my best to you know get get people in the stands and yeah. you know get hype. But for you guys, like how how much. Or how important is that to get the student body involved as well as all the other patrons that are going to be attending either the arena or or et cetera? Yeah, um, I say it's super important. Um, me, myself, Natalie, our videographer, Emmy, our marketing coordinator, we're always talking about what we can do just to get fans to come out to our games, come support their fellow students, mm-hmm. like their classmates, not even just them being athletes. Um, so like like I said the big thing is to try to build content that probably resonates with the student body and just like putting out content that people can enjoy. Mm -hmm. Um, But we try to get our athletes to go out in the community and we try to capture those moments and have the athletes like telling fans, Hey, come out to the games um, and whatnot, because like the games are, they're fun. They're exciting. Win or lose sometimes like games are very exciting, but even just like, you've been to games and the Grizz game you have funny moments and just things happen so it's like just a fun environment and yeah but also just I think like people should understand like you come out to a game you can help shift the game in our favor like energy is so important I think like the EMU game this year I know there was a lot of hype with Amani Bass being there but Mm -hmm. some people didn't even probably and don't even know this like we had a rapper named Sada Baby there and he wasn't for us. He was yeah. for EMU. But even then, like, you feel like people start noticing he was there. Yeah. So our fans got a little more rowdy because he was cheering for EMU. And it was just like that energy just feels like that game was like back and forth. And that energy when they won is yeah. just like Overtime one of the best. Yeah, I was, was, on, one I was of the- on the call for that at WXLU. <laughs> My God, it was amazing. Yeah, one of the best feelings I've had in the arena or like even last year, I believe it was when we played uh, Toledo in the arena for the first game. And that's when like. You still had Jamal Kane on the team, mm-hmm. Michael Parrish, um, Jalen Moore, Trey Townsend, Blake, and all of them guys. And they won that game. And the first thing they do, they ran over to the student section and they're going crazy. And just like seeing that, it was like cool and fun. And everybody was like super excited. So like just trying to create stuff that helps uh, students know like, oh, you know, we have athletics. We're pretty good in our athletics. And just like come out, you can 
you can help change the paradigm of a game, honestly. Absolutely. Like I, I think <laughs> I've done it the opposite way <laughs> before. I've, I I uh, I take advantage of the fact, like in the student section, you don't like have like obviously you want to be polite and not get kicked out, yeah. but like you could be you could have a little more edge to it than yeah. like, the band or, or yeah. beers can. So yeah. there was one time I think it was against Wright State. It was women's basketball. Mm -hmm. I. I made my way over to like their side of the, like of the court, like mm -hmm. when uh, the bench facing the uh, the student section. Yeah, man, I was getting in their face a little <laughs> bit, and then the game got closer. They started to catch up a little bit. I moved over to the other <laughs> side. I was like, oh, go yeah. Oakland, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think a lot of people would say they have no problem. Like even the coaches, they have no problem with fans. Like they get it. Fans are part of the game. I yeah. think like my biggest thing I would say is like as long as everybody, every fan is being respectful and not yeah. being disrespectful. I think like ultimately people understand. Hey, you're being a fan. Like yeah. fans are part of the game. But as long as you keep it respectful, you. I I think nobody ever has an issue with it. Yeah. I think like coaches even enjoy it. I I've heard fans chirping at our athletes before, mm -hmm. and I I I laugh at it because I think it's like funny just the things they might say, and it's just like. But then you also have moments. I I won't even say who it was, but we've had a moment <laughs> where we were at a game, and fans were chirping at this athlete, and all of a sudden the athlete starts scoring a lot of points, or <laughs> and they're like talking back to the athlete. You just see those moments, and you just laugh. Like them were funny moments. Yeah. Um, even as like a content creator, I'm supposed to be staying in the moment of what's going on in the game. Like you see those things, and you're just like, <laughs> that's kind of funny. Yeah. Like, so it's just like. And I'm a fan of the game, so like seeing those things are just funny to me. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it, it's so much fun. So, <laughs> CJ, that's gonna wrap it up here on the yeah. Joe Mo Show. I want to give you one last chance. Set the stage for yourself. What do you, you know, where can we find you and, and you know the Golden Grizzlies accounts? Or get you know, pl plug yourself and plug Oakland uh -huh. Athletics. You got the stage. So if you're looking for me, uh, you're gonna see me everywhere in the athletic building. I might be at the soccer field. I might be inside the arena, the baseball field. You'll see me with a camera in my hand. Almost 99% of the time. Oh, yeah. um, I'll, I'll plug Oakland Athletics. Just go to Golden Grizzlies on Instagram, Twitter. Um, search us up. And then if you like a certain team, maybe it's men's basketball, maybe it's volleyball, uh, track and field, just go follow them. Um, go follow their accounts. We're always trying to post content on there. And what I'll also say, hey, if you're watching this show, you want to work in sports, Myself, Natalie, our videographer, um, athletics, just overall, we're looking for interns. And if you want to help create the next piece of content that goes out on our platforms, hey, come join the team. <laughs> yeah, they're a lot of fun to work with. I'll give them a call. I appreciate that. So, CJ, thank you very much for coming on to the Joe Mo Show. That's going to wrap it up here. All right. Another wonderful interview under my belt. So, you know, you've been a wonderful hey, guest. No, thanks for having me. Thank yeah. you. And you can tune into the Joe Mo Show Thursdays at 6 on WXOU 88.3 FM. This is Giovanni Mosheri, Sports Media Director, signing off, and we'll see you next week.